Hi there, what's going on everybody? My name is Josh Kipperstock and I am a sound designer at Isotope. I have spent the last few months working on the plugin that I'm about to demonstrate for you today, which is Stutter Edit 2. Stutter Edit 2 is the latest collaboration between Isotope and electronic music pioneer BT. Now, what is Stutter Edit 2, you might ask? It is basically the ultimate effects chain for spicing up and adding some fun ear candy and flair to your music productions. Uh, with By just pressing a MIDI key, you're able to take any input audio and add incredibly complex edits and slices to it, as well as a number of effects that would otherwise take quite a few hours of uh, automation in your DAW. It's essentially um, instantaneous effects that just add a ton of movement and otherwise tedious editing to your music productions and kind of elevates them to that next level. So I would like to demonstrate what it can do for you today in a, several capacities. So I have this kind of dark trip hop beat that I've been working on, and I have quite a few instances of Stutter Edit 2 kind of sprinkled throughout the project. And uh, let's go ahead and play the beat back just to show you what I have to work with here. So I'm not sure if you noticed, but the very last bar of that, um, you may have noticed that some stuff was happening in the UI for Stutter Edit 2. Now let's play that back again. Stutter Edit 2 is being triggered, but just on the final bar there, there's this MIDI note right here that is triggering something that is called a gesture. Now, what is a gesture? A gesture is basically a preset. Um, Stutter Edit 2's presets are made up of banks and each bank has a number of gestures. Each gesture is mapped to its own separate piano key. Uh, and if you configure it, depending on uh, the DAW you use, it's gonna be different for each DAW, but you can configure Stutter Edit 2 to trigger these various gestures with MIDI input. So whether you have a MIDI keyboard or you can use your computer keyboard or just want to write it in like I have here, um, you can use MIDI to trigger the plugin. So again, Depending on what note it is, it, it informs which gesture uh, it plays back. So if I move that MIDI note up one, it's going to trigger the stepwise gesture just above it in the preset menu here. Just for demonstration. So yeah, you can use Stutter Edit in this fashion, and, and this is similar to how Stutter Edit 1 worked. Uh, much the same, you were able to route MIDI to trigger the various gestures that the, the plugin housed. Uh, and as you can hear, I mean, the gesture that we demonstrated, it has a lot of really cool editing, slicing and dicing that it performs. So how that's happening is in the UI here, we have this stutter control and this rate is informed by this envelope here on the right or this curve, if you will. So if you double click on the stutter rate, that brings up the curve editor for the stutter rate parameter. Uh, and here you can edit your curve in any which way you want. Um, and the, the curve itself will uh, go ahead and map to various rhythmic subdivisions and based on which subdivisions are selected that will inform how the edit is performed. So let's hear what what my addition uh, here sounded like. That's pretty intense. That's a that's a pretty fast edit. If you'd rather just kind of get really up and running quickly, say say you have a sound that you've chosen that you like, but you don't necessarily want to go through uh, kind of editing and tweaking until you find something that you want. We have a number of curves here on the right um, that you can just kind of plug in and play. Possibilities really are endless and this uh, ability to kind of manipulate the curve of the stutter rate parameter. This applies to pretty much every single parameter in the plugin. 
So we have a, a gate parameter here. You can open that up and add a curve and then you're off to the races. It's a really fun plugin that encourages experimentation, um, but really the possibilities are endless. And there are a number of banks here. We have this uh, Trap Beats bank. Let's, let's see what that triggers with this note. It's kind of a, a cool glitchy effect right there. Uh, probably not the one I would go with, but you know, just uh, to demonstrate. Uh, we also have this other MIDI note right here that is triggering. Um, so you'll see I have these two triggers here. I have the master trigger, which is just a MIDI track that's going to a master bus instance of Stutter Edit. And we have this perk trigger right here, which is going to my perk, AKA percussion group that is just triggering the percussion. So let's see what's going on there. So we have this instance on the percussion bus and once it hits that MIDI note, the stutter edit begins and you're off. So you can basically use this in this fashion to any degree in your productions. And, you know, in addition, Something that's new that I really, really love about Stutter Edit 2, whereas with Stutter Edit 1, um, you were able to trigger it with MIDI as I've just demonstrated, but in Stutter Edit 2, you can use it also as kind of a more standard audio effect thanks to a new mode called Auto Mode. And I'll show, uh, I have a few instances of Auto Mode in this project and I'll show you kind of uh, what it's doing here. So I have this kind of ring mod lead sound and I'll show you kind of what it sounds like without stutter edit first. And this is what it sounds like with stutter edit. So there's no MIDI triggering this particular instance of stutter edit, and that's because it is in auto mode. If you'll see at the top of the UI here, it says play mode auto. So if you click this mode, you can choose which mode stutter edit to performs in. So you have MIDI mode, which again was the mode I demonstrated for you earlier, where you can route MIDI to trigger various gestures, or you can choose auto mode. So I'm just gonna, go to MIDI here, you'll notice the plugin isn't doing anything, that's because it's not receiving any MIDI data. But if I go to auto mode, it'll just go ahead and play back the gesture you've chosen uh, without any MIDI input required. So this one, this is just uh, one that, one that I uh, made, I, I think I kind of worked off one of the default initialized presets a little bit of distortion going on. We have the stutter and uh, buffer controls going, a little bit of wet gain level riding throughout. And then in context. So auto mode is fantastic for if you really just kind of want to dial in on a sound instead of do something a little more spontaneous and performative. So if you're actually working on a sound from scratch, auto mode is great. You can use it to audition sounds you like. Or if in this case, if you just like the way one particular gesture uh, affects one track, you can just put it in auto mode, set it and forget it like so. Auto mode is also being put to effect here on the sub track. You might wanna use headphones for this. If you're on a laptop speaker, you might not hear it as well. Okay, so stutter edit is on in that case. I'm gonna turn it off first. If you can hear it, you basically just have a sine wave, just a basic low sine wave. So I've gone ahead and gone into stutter edit two, gone into the bass music synths bank, which can be found in the bass beats and instruments folder of the factory preset library. I took this gesture that I really like, low harmonic subchain, And I modified it and turned it into this, which is low harmonic subchain with tape stop. Very creative name, I know. 
So what I did was I took that uh, low harmonic sub chain gesture and I added tape stop, which is one of my favorite new effects in the plugin. Uh, it sort of simulates a vinyl tape stop similar to what you might find in our plugin vinyl. Without tape stop, you got kind of this meaty 808 style sub sound, but if you add tape stop, it adds some pitch movement to it that I personally really like. Kind of adds a little bounce to it. So here's that in context. Great. So now let's turn back the tr MIDI triggers that I demonstrated earlier and let's hear everything in the complete context. So thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something about this particular plugin. These are some of my personal favorite ways to use it and how I would use it in the context of a session that I'm working on. But seriously, everyone, the, the possibilities are endless. This is one of the most powerful effects plugins that I've ever used. And I hope you get as much use of it uh, as I've been getting. So again, this is Josh Kipperstock. Uh, from Isotope Sound Design. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope that you enjoy Stutter Edit too. Thanks again.